What is your preferred operating system? Is it Windows? Well, if it is, this article says stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> and honestly, I'm kind of with this article. I use Mac and I'm a proud I'm proud to say that and I I think I'll never go back to Windows. This is the first time I've had any Mac. No, actually I've had iPhone for a while. And even iPhone. I was using Android before. I started for years by the way and I started using Apple just to compare, see which one I like. I want to prefer Android. However, no. I prefer Apple. And I was using Windows my whole life. This is my first MacBook Air and I don't think I can ever go back to Windows. I think next time maybe in 10 years this laptop becomes unusable. I think I'll get Linux. Uh on frame on a frame framework laptop. So but I digress. It's this is a big topic. It's a very controversial topic. It could be a very controversial topic. So I'm interested in reading this article and see what they have to say. Programmers don't use Windows. In 2020 in the junior objects book I wrote this. Windows is not suitable for programmers. If you meet anyone who will tell you otherwise, you must know that you deal with a bad programmer or a poor one, which are the same things. Your computer has to be MacBook. Now, five years later, I still hold the same opinion. This blog post is supposed to be less opinionated and because of this, more convincing. The point is still the same. You either use Windows or you are a professional programmer. Surely there are a lot of good programmers that likes windows <laughs> but uh, yeah i kind of see what this article is saying first things first this is what ChatGPT thinks about mac os versus windows i toned it down a bit and sorted by importance keeping what matters most at the top it's post six compliant tools like grab oak set ssh and make work natively proper compiler toolchain clang llvm make git install Install everything with homebrew, one command away. Node, Python, Ruby, Go, Java, just work without path hell. The iTerm2 doesn't look like it was built in 1998. Docker runs faster and cleaner than on Windows. SSH keys integrate smoothly with the system keychain. Git behaves predictably. No CRLF versus LF nightmares. I have to say, I only started really doing all these developer things after I got my MacBook. So I can't really comment on the Windows versus Mac in terms of this. But I can say that for the most part on MacBook, all these things work very smoothly. I can hear you saying, what do I need to be, what do I need it to be POSIX compliant? And what is POSIX? Why do I need grab, set and awk? Am I a 60 years old Unix admin? Why would I ever need git and make in the command line? I don't use command line at all. I stay in the VS code that works like a charm and helps me make a living. I think this is definitely possible. I have a friend who's a developer who's an experienced developer who just uses VS code, uh, GUI for git and everything. And personally, I prefer command line. Does that make me a better developer? That in itself, I don't think so. Is that an evidence or a uh, one aspect that makes someone more likely to be a better developer maybe maybe but yeah i wonder about what other people think i hear you i do now hear me out you're not a bad you're not a programmer. You look like one. You walk like one. You click the same buttons programmers click. You even make the same salary they make, but you are not one of them. Yet now, read on. What is Unix? Programmers are the masters of computers. They tell machines what to do. To simplify the task of managing a complex hardware, programmers invented a few layers of abstractions. The first layer is an operating system. Instead of dealing with the hard hard drive and the pixels on the screen directly programmers invented files and st stand out 
They did it in the Bell Labs during the late 1960s and early 1970s. Earlier operating systems like CTSS and OS360 gave them a good start. Unix was the first OS to say that everything is a file, including de devices, directories, circuits, and processes. They also invented pipelines and the philosophy of write programs that do one thing well and work together. They also invented processes and their forking machines mechanism. Their names were Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. What is Windows? Five years later, another operating system was created with different abstractions. Not everything was a file anymore. Processes were, systems were not parallel and there were no pipelines. The name of the system was CPM and the name of the inventor was Gary Kildo. Then five Five years later, 24 years old Tim Patterson has made a copy of CPM and called it 86 DOS. Microsoft purchased a non exclusive license, rebranded it MS DOS, and sold it to IBM. That's how Windows was born in 1981. I do really like the fact that Linux, for the most part, the distros are uh, open source, and I really like the feeling of community effort to keep it going keep it uh supported and everything i do really like that why were there no proper files no processes and no pipelines because they weren't trying to build a real operating system cpm and ms dos were designed to designed for tiny single user single track microcomputers not multi-user mini computers or mainframes unix came out came out of bell labs Researchers, not hobbyists, CPM and MS-DOS were made for personal computers, offices, and home users. In other words, MS-DOS never meant to be a proper OS. It was something that can boot up small machines and run a single program. Then in 1985, Windows 1.0 was built. It was a fancy GUI on top of MS-DOS, MS -DOS, not a new OS. Later in 1995, Microsoft introduced a 32-bit APIs, Windows 32. Win32 and preemptive multitasking. However, the DOS subsystem was still lurking underneath. Windows 95 looked modern but was still a half DOS zombie. At the same time, in 1993, the team of Dave Cutler has built Windows NT that was not based on DOS at all. Latest Windows versions are descendants of NT, not MS DOS. Under the hood, it's conceptually closer to Unix than. To CPM. There are features like protected memory, kernel, user separation, and file handles. However, still it's not Unix. What is macOS? In 1984, Apple shipped their first Macintosh with the System 1 operating system. It was no better than MS-DOS. No multitasking, no memory protection, and primitive file system. No surprise, it didn't fly. In 1997, Apple bought Next and adopted next step, operating system. They made it the foundation for the new macOS, codenamed Rhapsody, later macOS X. I didn't know all this. I think I kind of knew about Next. I, I, I remember reading about it a little, uh, but I didn't know that it failed at first like that. In 2001, they shipped macOS X 10.0 Cheetah. Five years later, I threw away my ThinkPad with Windows and bought my MacBook with macOS X Leopard. Modern macOS is still built on that next foundation. It is POS6 compliant, and of course, it has processes and pipelines. In other words, it is Unix with a pretty GUI. Yeah, I think that's the best of both worlds. Uh, Unix with pretty GUI, but yeah, I think for my style of coding, I like having controls and Linux in that sense goes, is more in my favor. Yeah, but I do enjoy Mac. I have no complaints. This is really pretty. It's easy to use and everything. So I like it. Abstractions. Both Windows and macOS in their current versions are solid operating systems. The difference is in the abstractions inside them. Files, sockets, processes, memory blocks, users, permissions, and so on. In Unix, macOS, everything is a file, while in Windows, everything is an object. Files in Unix are a uniform abstraction. That's why they can be chained via pipes. In Windows, objects in Windows, objects are not unified in practice. They have different interfaces. This is why Unix shells 
and small composable tools become so powerful. The uniformity of everything is a file made composition natural. You can build complex workflows from single simple programs. In Windows, on the other hand, evolved around GUI apps and message loops, not shell pipelines. Pipelines. Unix was built around pipelines. In Unix, everything is a small tool reading. How do I how do I read this? STD in? I know what it does, but I never knew how to read this. Writing STD out. At the same time, everything is a file, increasing including sockets, devices, and processes. Programmers in Unix see every process as a composition of smaller processes glued together via pipelines. Their mindset since 1970s has proven to be effective amongst a few generations of software engineering elite. I really like using command line because I think it just makes everything smoother, everything more straightforward. There's less things to think about because what you do is more purposeful. You don't have to worry about all these uh, windows open and all these tabs open and what files you create and everything like that. It's just all under your control. And I, I really like that about using command line. Say you want to know which parts of your code base ch change the most, maybe for refactoring, testing focus, or bug hotspot analysis. This is how you do it, Unix style. Git log, pretty format, name only, grab Java, sort. Okay, that's cool. I think it's really like being good at command line helps a lot, making processes like this a lot faster. I know that now I make files and folders often using command line. Uh, I, yeah, like I said, I do all the git process using command line. I think when I can, I use command line and I never regret, I never go back to using GUI. Does this syntax make it make sense to you? If it does, I bet you use WSL. More, most serious Windows developers end up doing exactly that. The command line is the bare metal interface to Unix. The heart of the command line is pipelines. Thanks to pipelines, command line tools are inherently composable. You can chain them and automate tasks in seconds that would take hours by hand. No IDE plugin can replace this power. What are you? Now you know the you know what the difference is between I think for those of you that don't know about pipelines, it's basically you're chaining the command so that you're using the output of the previous command with the current command. So here, for example, <clears throat> you have the pipeline here at the end of the first line. So whatever you get out of this command here, you are using that as the input to this command. And whatever the output is here, you're using that as input to this sort, and then so on and so forth. And so it, as you can see, it's a really powerful tool. What are you? Now you know what the difference is between Windows and Mac OS. In both of them, you can code, browse internet, and watch movies. However, in Mac OS, you interact with the computer through Unix abstractions in a shell. You don't just use Mac OS, you inherit 50 years of disciplined abstraction. In Windows, you interact with the computer through draggable GUI elements. A GUI makes you a consumer. A CLI makes you a creator. A GUI hides the logic behind Gestures and icons, a CLI exposes it as a text you can reason about, automate, and combine. You can't pipe a button click into another program. You, can, you can't grab a progress bar, and you can't version control a mouse movement. Every click you make dies the moment you make it. Every command you write can live forever. Oh wait, in macOS you can't really play games. Bummer. Maybe you shouldn't, since you're a programmer. Yeah, I think Mac OS, one of the downsides that puts a lot of people off is that you can't really play games. And to be honest, I'm not really a gamer, so I've never really tried. I'm sure you can play games on it, but maybe it's not efficient. Um, I don't know if there will be a huge market for it. Like, I, I feel like there will be, like gaming market is so huge. So I don't know why Apple doesn't make computers that can, like, as good as it is now and then you can play games efficiently at the same time yeah i don't know uh, what are the challenges maybe it's not worth doing it maybe there is they don't think there's a enough market for it for it uh yeah but i because i think that's one of the main turning off points for a lot of my friends so yeah 
but let me know what you think. What's your favorite OS? I'm I'm genuinely interested. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one. Like and subscribe. Bye.